my name is Itumele Ntlapani and I am the founder and chief executive officer of Shape Cafe. Shape Cafe is a hybrid of coffee and ice cream and slush and we are based in Sibogain Township and Southgate Mall and Newtown. What Shape Cafe would normally give for its community is to create a space where people come and work. We also use our internal skills from marketing to accounting and legal to assist small businesses with advisors every now and then. As a matter of fact, very soon we are conducting a strategy workshop for all township-based uh, businesses at no cost. This business has been quite important for the community. Young people now in my community, they have a different role model. They look at a person who says, here's a guy who brought what would be a sophisticated business and brought it in a township right in the middle of a squatter camp and a hostel. And he's been running this thing here for five years. Who would have thought? My wife, Nons Gelelo, she has a background in law and she works at Shape Cafe as the chief operations officer. So all our legal things, including operations and systems, she is been an amazing addition actually to the team. I say she's the heart and soul of this business. The looting that happened in Gauteng and KZN, I remember I said to my wife, when looting happens, Sebukeng, that branch, I can assure you, nobody will touch it because people love Sheep Cafe so much in Cebu King and people protect it. And I remember at night, I got a call from a friend of mine who said, Sheep Cafe has been looted. That was the most devastating moment for us. We sacrificed so much. We've lost so much money. We've lost so much of family time. And when we got there in the morning, it was war. I had never seen so many angry people. You can look at the things that people were looting and you would see people picking up a chest drawer and drop it and run to food. And that gave a different complete story. I'm asked all the time if I was angry. I was disappointed, not angry, because I know the community that lives there. I know the poverty that happens within the communities. I know the frustration with the municipalities. I know all of those things. I just wasn't expecting that they will take from Shape Cafe. During the unrest in July 2021, especially in KZN and Gauteng, many businesses had to shut down. They did not have an opportunity to have business insurance. Avbop realized the urgency that was required in assisting these uninsured small businesses. And we've established a special disaster relief fund to a total amount of 10 million rands. So far, we have 11 beneficiaries from across different sectors. Alpop sent me a link saying, we have an opportunity to fund a polluted business. The funding that we got from Alpop went uh, to purchasing equipment, and we're able to trade again. And I think we are in a comfortable position again now. The beautiful story is that when we had received funding from Avbop, obviously resources were there now, coffee machines were there, ice cream machines were there, but you still need stock. Guess who gave us stock? The community members donated money for us to buy stock. And that is beautiful. You see, I'm even getting teary. <laughs> that was the most heartwarming thing ever for the community to say we don't have much here's 20 rand i don't know what you can buy with 20 rand but continue to do what you you do best our involvement in rebuilding the business has provided hope in the community what was wonderful to see was the spirit of ubuntu we saw communities coming together in spite of fear and despite of the uncertainty around the future. It just showed us that despite all odds, hope still prevails. That community came through for us and I was, it was overwhelming. It went straight to the heart. It went straight to the heart. 54% of GDP is from the contribution of the small and medium enterprises. In terms of employment, small and medium enterprises contribute 50 to 60 percent of the South African workforce. Small businesses in, in South Africa 
plays a huge role. When you look at the younger generation who didn't have opportunities to study at universities, where do they work? It's usually in the small businesses. When a big corporation says, we need a person with two years experience, we are the gateway for a job opportunity. And that's how important we are to the economy. Having a business it makes me happy. I sleep very well at night. I don't wanna lie, I sleep well at night. For any organization to be successful, you need to be sustainable. And in order to be sustainable, you need to become an asset for the communities in which you're operating. One of my personal focuses is on trying to make a difference wherever I can and trying to contribute and give back wherever I can. And it is working within an organization like AppWob, one is able to do that on a level that far exceeds what we're able to do as individuals. I'm very passionate about working in this organization. I love what we do. I think we're helping to heal the psyche of the nation. And for me, that is very gratifying indeed. I'm a survivor of gender-based violence. Some years ago, I suffered a violent abuse on my body and it made me a victim of gender-based violence. But I realized that was not a place I was going to stay. I had to rise above it and become a survivor because without becoming a survivor and taking the necessary steps to recovery, you will not become the person you were. We judge women who've been abused. We consider that they did something wrong to deserve their abuse. Their dress was too short. They did something wrong. And in fact, we need to change society because abuse is never the victim's fault. It's the perpetrator's fault. In South Africa, we have a terrible situation of gender-based violence against women and vulnerable children. We also noticed during the COVID pandemic that the incidence of gender-based violence increased dramatically, especially during the hard lockdown. That was quite alarming and quite disturbing. And so we felt we really did need to play a more active part in this space. One of our key values is people. We believe that in times of bereavement and trauma, people reach out to other people for comfort and for empathy, and that's, that's our purpose. We have partnered with the Tears Foundation, which is an NGO doing great work in the anti-GBV space. We sponsor their helpline called Help at Your Fingertips, which provides support, counseling, and information around safe havens for victims of gender-based violence. And through that sponsorship over the last year, we've assisted over 99,000 victims of gender-based violence. And we feel that by doing that, we are contributing back to the communities in which we are operating. I established Tears Foundation to give women the service that I did not get. Help at Your Fingertips can be used on any phone anywhere in South Africa. It has a database of almost three and a half thousand free health facilities in South Africa that will assist you with your rape, abuse or any other problem related to gender-based violence. By simply dialing on your phone star 134 star 7355 hash, you will immediately free of charge have sent to you three numbers of the nearest places where you can get help because to survive you need help. As an intervention specialist at TS, we assist victims from when they report a case till when they get justice. We've got three important areas of work that we do. The first one is counseling, the second one is shelters, the third one is opening up cases at the police stations. We believe at TIERS that a close relationship with the police is absolutely vital to helping survivors of abuse. Recently, together with AvBob, we had the privilege of upgrading the Victim Empowerment Center at the Alexander Police Station. TIERS also uh, assists us a lot with the technology, the app where you send an SMS. That SMS will then kickstart all services, so the victim will then speedily get assistance. For example, your social workers, your police, uh, the reactions. That's where uh, we are saying that uh, corporate and, and NGOs are very important with uh, collaboration with the SAPS. So our logo is a teardrop. 
and our byline is hope and healing. And a tear for me represents the tears that you cry for your abuse, the sadness that the life you once knew has ended. But it also represents the tears of joy that we cry when something wonderful happens and healing is a wonderful experience. For me, healing is a journey. Every day I decide to be well. I decide to be happy, I decide to make a difference. And with the support of ABBOB, we help many thousands of women who would have not been helped. Now I'm living my fullest life. And every day I help other women who've been abused. What a privilege, what a wonderful life. I didn't want to get involved in a business that was just for me. I, I liked the community appeal. I liked the fact that jobs were being created in areas where there's no prospect for job creation. We're in an area called Tutuka in the Eastern Cape. It's a land that's owned by a, a local chief in the area. There's over a thousand hectares now of black wattle on what used to be farmlands and we are in the business of getting rid of black wattle to convert to charcoal. The process of making charcoal is, um, is an art in itself. You need a, a very good burner in order to have the yield that you want. So it starts with cutting black wattle using chainsaws. Uh, timber is then stacked in the forest. Once we have enough stacks, our tractor goes out into the forest. Timber is loaded onto trailer. Trailer then makes its way back to the area where charcoal is loaded into kilns. Kilns are very large ovens that we pack timber into that reaches a temperature of about, a very high temperature, <laughs> burning temperature. We make a point of only using black wattle trees. Black wattle is heavy on the water supply, which is dire. The rural areas here have no water. It can rain for days on end, but the water doesn't ultimately get to its intended recipients. So by getting rid of black wattle, we are enabling an improvement of water supply in the area. Unemployment in the Eastern Cape is rough. There just, there aren't any jobs here. The reliance on grants is immeasurable. So the ability to create jobs, you know, makes a difference. The Bala World and Bail Fund came at a point in my business where I'd exhausted all of my reserves. It couldn't have come at a better time, both in terms of providing me with the emotional and financial capacity to take the next step in my business, to have a brand. It enabled me to gain confidence in my abilities to run a business and to take it to the next level. So Parawag Beu is a national program that targets social entrepreneurs, startups, and small businesses that are operating in rural communities. Businesses that solve for environmental stewardship, conservation, and women empowerment. Then we incubate them into a leadership business course together with some wraparound supports that include mentoring as well as coaching. Then we offer that financial support and financial support is a combination of both a grant fund together with the interest-free loan. How the strategy came about is, is Bala World. They mentors advice on how I need to diversify my clientele. It's made all the difference. And that's in fact how I got into the 5kg packaging market, is realizing, goodness, okay, my market is right here. So in as much as it's wonderful to export, the profit margin is, is the same. So I'm able to offer a superior offering in terms of export quality charcoal, and that's what's enabled my brand to grow. I prefer using Lerato's charcoal because it lasts longer. It's much better than wood, and it's cost efficient because 
I buy a ton of meat almost every single day. As fast as I make it is as fast as it goes. My name is Benam Bani. I'm here uh, as a supervisor at the color charcoal. For me, it's working here is making a huge difference with my family. Because I can support my family. My firstborn doctor is she's busy uh, studying. And uh, the last two doctors, they're at a uh, school. So for working uh, for as a color charcoal make a huge difference. Difficulties around being a female entrepreneur are, <laughs> you know, you go in and you're optimistic and you hope for the best and um, it's difficult um, when you're working in rural areas where there's, you know, your dynamic between males and females and culturally who can be spoken to in what way. I wouldn't change it for anything though because in environments like this, you know, you, you learn more about your culture than if I was sitting in an office. I like the independence of it and owning my time. It's been tough, however, I feel that I'm in the right place. By enabling these uh, small businesses, social entrepreneurs, it's a vehicle to alleviating the pressure in terms of the high unemployment rate, particularly the youth. Every morning I get to home, looking forward to my work. I'm working with B and B hives, and I love, I really love my job. I really love what I'm doing. It makes me happy all the time. I'm doing beehives and beekeeping. That's why I'm keeping miracle work out here with Zang every day. I get so high in the morning. With us having tapped into the raw spaces, there's so much talent. People that operate in raw spaces, they are marginalized and undersaved. So our fund has enabled them to increase their capacity so that they can grow their market. We are here to support those particular businesses to enable you to create your own ecosystem and sustainability, making sure that those communities continue to thrive and continue to grow. My name is Lesejo Serolong Holtz Apfel, and I'm the founder of Bokamoso Impact Investments and Bokamoso Foods. Our company uh, packages food, and we also package honey. We manufacture beehives. We're based in the beautiful Daung village in the Northwest province. We are excited about honey because honey is one of the products that's imported in the whole continent of Africa and South Africa specifically. Bees play such an important role in our food ecosystem. You know, according to estimates, if we don't have bees in the world, humans would have up to like four years to live. So if you are a farmer, like um, many people in the area that grow sunflower, that grow vegetables, you need bees to pollinate. And there are so many advantages of having bees around. Your yield um, increases, you know, the size of your product becomes much better, much healthier. So it's the symbiotic um, cycle that takes place. The flavors of honey is primarily um, determined by the nectar that the bee is feeding from. For example, the bees go and pollinate you know, the, the sunflowers, and once the pollination is done, you'll see that you know, the honey has this bright yellow look. The process of manufacturing our hives starts off with sourcing sustainable uh, timber all across South Africa. And we make sure that we also teach young people how to build. It's so important for us to get involved in the manufacturing of the beehives because we, we offer empowerment to young people in South Africa. We also transfer skills. You know, in any business that you create, there's a value chain that actually enable a more resilient community so that each one can participate in the South African economy. It's been such a dream as a company that Bala World has actually partnered with us to make our dream come true, which is having a facility, a processing facility in a rural area where we can provide sustainable employment for young people, where we can also expose young people to the food industry. And, you know, in areas like this, there aren't many um, companies like ours, so we are one of the first in this rural area. 
the Rattles managed to put a warehouse, a manufacturing plant and a warehouse in the middle of a rural space uh, that enable about 50 jobs. She just uh, is amazing. She's been able to make sure that people don't have to spend money traveling. She brought the business into their own environment. Our challenges around this country or around this uh, area of Lokhabe. It's a, an employment rate is growing very fast, day by day. And we appreciate and we, we wish that Bukamosho must go further. And people here were so much interested. They are still asking me, where is the project? So we've been able to manufacture 660 beehives and distribute them across young people in South Africa. We've been able to pay over 300,000 of dividends from honey that we have purchased from the owners of beehives. So this is annuity income that beekeepers get for the next five years or for the lifespan of the hive. So that's a huge change given that a lot of our young people in rural communities rely on social welfare really to survive. For us, partnerships such as Balo World um, play such a, a crucial role in making sure that you know, we are able to expand our impact, um, not just in this rural area, but throughout South Africa. We're able to reach more bee farmers, we're able to train more farmers using our beautiful facility in the middle of the village. I'm very excited to be part of a, a bigger scheme of making sure that we change lives, we create uh, impact in the communities. You know, we want to shine the light and make sure that people really look at their own situation differently and they can innovate for the better. Mm -hmm.